Hey everybody, welcome back to another Diecast Review, pair of Sprint Car Diecast Reviews today. Uh, this is going to be Corey Eliason's 2021 um, Hager Realty Service Inc. Uh, Sprint Car. Uh, this is the number 26. He uh, actually had a pretty good rundown at uh, Cotton Bowl this last weekend. Uh, I believe he finished podium on Friday night. So uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and take a look at this diecast here. Uh, I only have one available on the sites, and that's this one. So we're going to take a look at it. And uh, just kind of get a good look at uh, what came in. So we're going to start with the box here. You can see we do have the picture of the 26 car there. And we got uh, Rudin Racing there. Rudin Racing. Corey Eliason. And then uh, Vis Vasila, California, I believe is how that's pronounced. Um, number 26 over here on this side. Corey Eliason. Then it just says 26 right there. Go over to this side here. 2021 car. So it is the 2021 sprint car for uh for Corey Elias in there um but yeah that's that's what we've got so far so I actually pulled it out of its box already we already have that already like uh emptied out or pulled out whatever you want to say there um but now we're going to go ahead and we'll just pull the the uh car itself forward and um that way we can kind of get a look at it I did not assemble it yet so we're going to assemble it on camera here we're going to start with the very base model this is the part that is screwed in uh to the foam base so you do have to unscrew it from the bottom but then you do get into it and you can see we do have our engine detail here our air filter on top, black valve covers, silver engine block there. You see our radiator up in the front. Uh, we got our black rims on the Hoosier tires here uh, for front and rear. Uh, we got our exhaust pipes there. You can see we do have the little piece of bodywork here on the front. Also have this piece of bodywork here. Um, which I think is on all of them, but I'd have to double check. Um, but yeah, we do have some decent, uh, different fuel lines and stuff that run through there. So we do have some really nice engine detail. It is a 118, so it is a little bit bigger. So it does allow some of that engine detail in there, but, um, I like it. I think the engine detail on these sprint cars is pretty cool. Um, the wheels actually spin pretty easily on this one. A lot of them have been kind of stiff. Um, but yeah, this one spins pretty good. Uh, you look in here at the seat, you can see we do have Simpson belts, uh, right there. We also do have a carbon fiber seat, full containment. You can kind of see how that looks very nice looking seat there uh we got our steering wheel in there and then there's two gauges that are actually printed you can kind of see them but right there you can barely see them right there up to the top right of the steering wheel uh we do have the number 26 here on the tail tank along with the rear bumper um then we got just the rear detail here including the shock and then uh you can see underneath we got our chain drive or actually that's our brake i believe um so that's our brake rotor there. I shouldn't said chain drive because it's right there. There's our differential. But um, yeah, we got our Acme piece here. What is the serial number? I think it's 292. Um, and yeah, we do have the white chassis bars, which I think is cool. This is this car has always looked pretty good with the white chassis. Uh, I think it makes it look pretty neat. So, uh, But yeah, that's our basic uh, stuff. So here's what it comes with. We do have our engine cover here. It comes in a little piece of plastic. I'll have to slide that back in after we take a look at it. But we do slide that on just like this. Mm, there we go so you get that slid on just like that and then you've got our, your engine cover on uh the second thing you're going to pull out is going to be the front wing uh the front wing is going to be probably the hardest part to get on uh some people have more struggles with the rear wing but you can see here it just says uh oh there we go rudin racing uh a race rudin foundation on that side uh and actually it's on both sides um so yeah that's that's what's on that side there um but yeah you're going to go in and you actually have to kind of um wiggle it and kind of work with it a little bit i always like to do one side and then just kind of get the other side over um it can be a little troublesome sometimes just because of the way that um the way you have to get them on there it takes a little bit of uh, a little bit of force i don't want to i don't like saying force because force makes it sound like you really got to push on it um but it does take a little bit of movement so you can't be too afraid of it, but you also don't want to be just, you know, hammering down on this front wing trying to get it to slide into place. It's it's not too hard. Um, you know, you'll never, ever need a tool. I can tell you that. You should never need a tool. This stuff should slide into place pretty easily. Um, and so that being said, you just kind of... Um, come on. Oh, there's one part. Let's try this side first, maybe. Maybe we'll try this side and see if we can get this side to go. This is definitely the hardest part is getting the the wing on. There we go. I just got the front two prongs down. Now I got to get the rear two down. Oh, 
There we go. And then we go back to this side here. And that one snapped right in place. Perfect. Very nice. Sits really good. I don't know how flexible those are, so I always have to be a little cautious. But you can see it is solid as a rock, so it fits in there really good. Um, so the last part is going to be this top wing. Top wing is actually pretty cool. You can see we got Rudin Management there, Rudin. And then you got uh, Hager Realty. Eliason and the number 26 up there. Uh, but yeah, when you're putting this one on, this one's actually really easy. You just kind of have this little slot up here and then a groove in there. You line that up like that. And then you just peel back kind of like this. And then it locks in. I mean, when I say locks in, it is solid. Like that's how solid it gets. So very, very solid once you get it snapped in place. You could, now I don't recommend it, but you can pick it up by the wing like this pretty regularly i mean they're that solid it fits really good that being said i always prefer to kind of pick it up by the base i'm always a guy i don't i don't like leaving fingerprints on my cars and you'll notice that anytime i pick a car up uh, sometimes i'll have to touch the paint or something but generally when i pick it up i pick it up by the base and the wheel um so that's how i kind of pick these up too I, you can see how i kind of pick it up i pinch the wheel because i can't leave a fingerprint on the tire not really and then if i had to move it around i I'd do the same thing i kind of like to hold on to the wheels that just seems to be my favorite way to do it but you can see here a lot of blue and a lot of white not a lot of sponsors on this car you can see just very blue uh down the side and on the wing there move it around to the right or to the left side here you can see we've got hager realty services number 26 again the white chassis everything uh eliason up there on the front so good looking car for sure um but definitely it is pretty i don't want to say bland because it's not a bland car um but it's definitely it doesn't have a a crazy amount of design to it that's that's definitely for sure so um but yeah anyway i was i was mentioning i was just gonna pull this over and show you guys this is how i actually have my you'll notice when i pick up a car like this which is a nascar i'll carry it from the chassis and i will actually put my finger right here on this little fin so that my finger doesn't touch the paint and then again i'm not you can carry it however you want if i'm at the racetrack and i'm getting a car signed i will grip it like this to make sure it doesn't get dropped but if i'm you know working around my desk or i'm moving them around i'll reach in and i'll kind of pick them up like this and that way i've got fingers underneath and i'll kind of have it there if i really need to get a good grip on it or something i'll actually stick my finger up inside the wheel well right here i got a really good grip on it i can literally flip it all the way over and i can still work with it and um yeah i don't leave fingerprints on it so yeah anyway i just wanted to point that out in case you ever wondered why i do that and if you're ever looking for a, a way to do that because some of them if you, once you leave a fingerprint on a really nicely polished car it it's kind of annoying to try and get back out. So um, anyway, that'll really wrap up the sprint car part of this uh, diecast review. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Also, turn on the notification bell and subscribe for more diecast content. Um, if you haven't already, uh, check out the earlier video from today, which was the James McFadden sprint car, one of my absolute favorites as a Casey Kane racing fan. So check that out. Um, that'll be uh, probably the little thumbnail thing at the end of the video. I don't know. I, I think I'll set it there. But anyway, guys, this has been Race Grace. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you in the next Diecast Review.